it's garlic planting time here in Southern California and maybe where you live. Are you ready? Hey, it's Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support, to help take your garden to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. Hey guys, it's garlic planting time. Here in Southern California at least, and many parts of the South, uh, if you didn't get your garlic in the ground and you were in a Northern climate with a colder winter, you still might have some time to do that. I've heard from northern growers that as long as you get the garlic into the ground before the ground freezes, you're going to be fine. If you are a northern gardener and know this is a true statement, uh, let us know down in the comments. I'd love to get your input on that. I am going to be, as I mentioned in the video last week about growing onions in containers, uh, I'm doing this because I don't have a lot of space. My my actual vegetable garden is not going to be ready until a couple months from now. By then I will have needed to get these in the ground and they're going to be a long-term crop. They will not be harvested until July, June. And so, so I thought the best thing was to grow them in containers. It's quite windy out here. I'm hoping that's not picking up on a microphone. If it is, I'm sorry for that. So I'm going to plant them in this uh, metal wash tub that I brought from the other house and it's still got a bunch of weeds in it, some daffodils that, you know what, I'm actually gonna try and salvage these. I don't know if they'll work, they're coming up way too soon. They actually never uh, went dormant, so they're probably not gonna be any good, but I'm gonna try them and see. Now it looks like there's daffodils all in here, so I'm gonna get the daffodils and the weeds cleaned out, and I'm gonna transplant these daffodils somewhere else. Okay, so there's way too many daffodils in here to transplant. So what I'm gonna do instead is So what I'm gonna do instead is fill this container up with more compost, plant the garlic on top of the daffodils. Now typically I wouldn't recommend planting um, bulb crops with bulb ornamentals because bulb ornamentals can and sometimes are poisonous uh, and you don't want to mix them up but you can probably tell the difference between garlic and daffodils if you can't don't plant them together but I'm gonna go ahead and do that okay so our planting area is ready and you plant garlic in containers the same way you plant them in the ground or in raised beds. However, there are two different types of garlic that you can plant, and you need to know what types those are so you know in your area which types you can actually grow. So the two types of garlic are soft neck and hard neck. Hard neck varieties are grown typically in northern climates, zone five or below, although I have seen people growing them here um, with mediocre results, but I prefer to stick to the, hard, the tried and true soft neck garlic. Now the hard neck garlic, I do kind of wish I could grow because they have the really cool uh, buds on them called scapes. Not only are they really neat looking, but you can also cook with them, just chop them up like a scallion and they have a, a really good garlicky flavor to add to um, its food. But especially this year when I don't have a lot of room, I might try those next year. But this year, I'm going to stick to what I know grows well here, and that's soft neck garlic. Now, last year, actually this year, I harvested, just a few months ago, I harvested a bunch of garlic from only a very small raised bed plot. Uh, if you watched that video, you know I had a really good harvest. Nice, big bulbs, very well clothed. Um, the year before that, I did an, an experiment because I had heard that much like when we grow tulips here, we have to kind of fake them out to think that they've had a cold winter. So you put them in the refrigerator and then for like six weeks and then you take them out and plant them. 
the tulips think they've had a winter, so when the weather warms up a little bit, they start to come up. And I heard that to get garlic to clove better and to make larger bulbs here in a mild winter climate, that you should do the same thing. Well, I did that on half and half I did not refrigerate. And the results that I found were that the refrigerated ones were much smaller. They both cloved, but they were much smaller and gave me much less garlic, less bang for my buck. And it's more trouble to refrigerate them. So this past year, I did not refrigerate them and had a great harvest yet again. So this year, I'm not refrigerating them. I am using some garlic cloves that, um, that are off of bulbs that I grew last year. Now, when you do this, and you can get your cloves from the grocery store, your, gar your garlic bulbs from the grocery store, just in the produce section. Best if they're organic. Sometimes they're sprayed with a sprout inhibitor that keeps them from sprouting, and we need them to sprout. Uh, when you do that, buy more bulbs than you're going to plant, um, because each of the cloves will make a garlic plant. However, the bigger bulbs, or the bigger cloves, are better. So as you know, if you've cooked with garlic, sometimes the outer cloves are bigger and the inner cloves, not so much. Save the inner cloves for cooking. The outer cloves are what we want to plant. So you want big, meaty, nice sized cloves to produce nice sized garlic bulbs for the following year. Okay, so some of the requirements in terms of where you want to plant them. Very similar to onions, they like full sun, they like loose, well-draining soil, so they can really expand under there and they're not constricted with tough, packed-in soil. They also want even moisture, so I'm going to be putting some drip tubes in this uh, container once we're finished, so they'll be on a timer and they'll stay consistently moist. Not consistently soaking wet, just enough moisture where you put your finger down there, you just feel a little bit of moisture, it's not dried out. So one more thing that garlic needs is some good organic fertilizer at planting time. Especially for, for bulb type crops, you want phosphorus, which aids in root development. That's the middle number on any container of fertilizer. And so the thing about phosphorus though is in a lot of soils, it does not move through the soil very easily. So the best time to, to put that in is at planting time at the root level. So I'm going to be using some uh, Neptune's Harvest crab and lobster shell. What I love about this is it's a nice form of uh, organic phosphorus and calcium. <coughs> oh, that was crabby. I also like that it has different size particles to it. There are larger pieces where you can actually see some of the crab shell, and then there is a fine powder. All together, that's going to have it break down slowly for the big stuff and uh, more quickly for the small stuff. So it makes it kind of like an organic, slow-release fertilizer. Just for good measure, for some nitrogen and a lot of trace minerals, I'm going to sprinkle in some of the Neptune's Harvest kelp meal. And then I'm just going to turn that over get it right down to where those roots can quickly take advantage of it without having to worry about if you have the right type of soil for phosphorus to move easily through. All right, so planting depth and planting spacing. You're gonna to wanna to plant these about two inches deep and about six inches apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant this full of garlic, two inches deep, six inches apart. Another good thing to know is, just in case you don't, the flat part points down, the pointy part points up. So apparently we're gonna have garlic and daffodils coming up in this, bit, in this uh, container. The garlic should be coming up with just in a couple of weeks. 
and the daffodils probably more like January. However, right now, I want to do a little bit of a cover crop just to take advantage of this blank space with a fast growing um, crop that's not gonna be here for a long time. Cilantro will fit that bill very nicely. And so I'm just gonna plant some cilantro in here. Uh, hopefully, it's probably better if I had seedlings so that I don't have to dig up what I just planted, but they were just planted so they don't really have uh, roots yet. So even if I dig one up, I can just stick it right back. Got some parsley out front I might plant in the other half of this. All right, so parsley and cilantro have a pretty similar look to them, but a very different flavor. Let me know in the comments if you are someone like me who loves cilantro, or you're someone like Emily who thinks it tastes like soap. And that's a genetic thing, that's a real thing. So. Let me know which uh, side you fall on. The shade that this provides the soil is also going to keep uh, moisture in. Now technically I probably should have put the drip hose in before this, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. And I'll show you that. If you watched my video from a couple of weeks ago, this will just be a little bit of an additional add-on to that. So this is the main uh, half-inch tubing that feeds all of the vegetable gardens and this container that I planted the onions in. And so all you have to do to add another container or planting area is just get your hole punch. Punch the hole. Put in a little barb connector, like that. Now, because we aren't gonna be watering anything between here and the container, I've got some tubing that does not have drip emitters in it. So I'm just gonna measure that out so that it's long enough to go from here to the pot. And slip that on there. Run this into this bed. And at this point, we're going to add another barb into that tube. Now this is the tube that has the drip holes in it. We're going to hook this down with some wire or landscape staples. And just kind of spiral it around this container so it hits everything. At the end, we need to put a goof plug to end that line. So that caps the end off. That's why I love drip. It's so easy to add to and adjust. It makes things simple. Now, the one thing I will do, um, and I don't even know if it's necessary, but I've done it ever since I've been using drip, is when I plant something new like this, I go ahead and use the hose and I give it a thorough watering and then allow the drip system to take over after that. Um, I feel like it needs a lot of water right now because the roots are kind of in shock and I just want it to be saturated and then the drip can take over. So I'm gonna do that, and then in eight to nine months, it's harvest time. It is a long time away, but uh, you know, garlic stores for a long time, so it kind of evens things out. So in about June, um, I'll do another video harvesting this. Uh, last year, like I said, I got a great harvest. I think I got 100% of my cloves to come up and actually produce, 
and I think all the cloves or all the bulbs that I dug up were they were really good looking bulbs. They were there was no runs in the in the lot. And we had some nice large ones that again I used today to plant some of the extras and I've still got plenty in storage. So uh, that should last me through the winter. So again, harvest time in eight to nine months, you'll know it's time to harvest because the leaves are gonna start turning brown. At that point, it's okay to satisfy your curiosity by just taking a couple fingers and digging down next to one of the stalks until you hit the bulb. And you can kind of see how big the bulb is from there without digging the whole thing up. And you can even feel kind of the ribs of each clove. So you can see if it's actually cloved as well. But following all these directions, you should have no problem if you learned something, give the videos a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.